Let's continue our introduction to Solaris and Karma by taking a look at lighting and specifically the light mixer node. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. So if you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the light mixer node. So first of all, I'm going to come into our area light here. And I'm just going to reset this intensity just so that we have a nice base to start off with where we don't have any, any changed values. So let's drop down our light mixer node and take a look at it. So we can wire that up into here. And right off the bat, you're gonna see a couple of things. We have a list over here, and this is gonna be a list of all of our lights that are wired into our light mixer. And then we have some sliders and attributes and a transform tab. And over here we have a couple of buttons. So this button will get rid of that, that light list. This button will enable and disable your light settings. So if I select the light here, you can see that we have all of our light settings from our actual node, just like if we were to click on our light there. So I'm gonna leave this up for now. And because I can see these settings here, I can actually change them. And if I change them in this tab here, you're gonna see that it updates in our viewport. But if I take a look at our area light here, it's actually gonna change the light settings on the actual node itself. So we can also click and drag this into here. And you can see that nothing is actually showing is changed in here. It's just the default values. And I'll show how I can tell that here in just a moment, but let's go ahead and just reset that intensity back down. But we can click and drag any lights into these settings here and we get the, or into this window here and then we get their settings. So we can also adjust the things like exposure and intensity through these sliders. So I wanna drag this up. You can see that we are changing the intensity in this light mixer node, but the actual values are staying the same. And if we change the, if we take a look on the actual node itself, you can see that the values are staying the same. So if I bypass this, it's going to bypass those settings. If I come into our attributes tab, you can see we have this little red dot next to our intensity now, and that's just showing that we have changed a value. If I wanna reset this, I can right click and say revert to defaults. And if I come in here, you can see if I change this value and now I bypass the light mixer, it's actually not going to bypass those settings because as we said before, they're actually being applied to the node itself. So just be aware of that. And I just wanna touch on something real quick here. I recommend that you actually change all of your intensity values through the actual, this, this tab right here, or just by selecting your lights. And the reason I say that is because when I was building out the scene for this project, I actually ran into an issue, and this may be fixed at the time that you're watching this, but it was an issue with the light mixer node where what I was seeing in the viewport was different than what I was seeing in mPlay and what was actually rendering to disk. It wasn't a issue of like color correction or anything like that. It was actually a bug with the light mixer node and it doesn't happen all the time and it might be fixed by the time you're watching this. But if you notice that you're seeing something different in your viewport versus what you're seeing in your final render, be aware that it might actually be your light mixer node just being uh, a little bit buggy. So be aware of that. And then if you need to, this can be a variable, a very powerful way to procedurally change your lights. But uh, if you don't, or if you start having issues, then you may just want to uh, start to make your values match in the actual settings of the lights versus what you have in the sliders. So just be aware of that. That is a, a bug that can happen and just keep an eye out for it. But if we wanna actually change our, our lights, we can do them all through here. We can change the color. We can turn this on or off. We can, well, this is muting the light. This is turning it on and off. And then this is soloing it. So if we wanted to solo it, we could do that in there. Again, we can come back in here and just revert those settings to default. And we can actually change the position and stuff in here as well. But if we just click on any of these values, you can change them. I'm gonna just leave them all alone for now. And the way that I recommend to work with this is to actually use the light mixer as a sort of like a, a all-in-one node 
to access all of your lights at once without having to click back and forth between them all. But let's go ahead and start to set some lights up here. I'm gonna take this, this light here and I'm just going to come up above our scene and I'm gonna place this with the diffuse option set. So let's come back to our light, select diffuse and I'm gonna click right about there and I'm just gonna reset the transform values to like negative 90 just so it's pointing straight down and maybe i'll move this a little bit further away from the wall just so that it is not going to give us such a strong highlight on our wall there and actually maybe i should shrink that down just a little bit as well we can actually start up our render now and start to see what we're getting with this. So we're getting a nice overhead light. I'm gonna just duplicate this and I'm gonna place all of my lights in this manner. I'm just going to kind of duplicate and move them around. So I'm gonna use this specular option now. I'm gonna place one kind of around here coming from this angle. I'm gonna move it back out of our view. And actually before I turn this back off, before I do that, I'm gonna take a look at the actual settings of this light. So I'm gonna to come to the shaping tab. I'm gonna turn this into a spotlight. So I can change the angle. You can see here what that does for us. I can increase or you know decrease this. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit more of a spotlight type effect. You can play around with this softness to make that edge more or less harsh. I'm gonna leave it, yeah, maybe I'll soften it up just a little bit. And we'll leave it something like that for the moment. Let's go ahead and look back through our camera. And we can obviously always come back to and change all these settings. And actually, I'm gonna move this maybe, yeah, maybe something, something like that. Not sure I moved it much from its original position, but I like that actually upon moving it. So, We'll roll with that. I'm going to start a render back up and I'm going to just create another one of these with the spotlight setting set up and I'm going to place kind of like a, a harsher spotlight up here. And then I want one of our original area lights. I'm just going to use this to kind of fill in the light over on this side. So place it Maybe somewhere like that should be good. Now I'm gonna come back to our light mixer node and I wanna cover one other thing here. We can actually change or create lights. I mean, with this option here, I don't recommend it uh, because it makes this little subnet where all of your lights are contained and I just don't really like that. So I'm not gonna work with that. So use that if you want, but it's not something that I'm gonna focus on. But we can also create a collection here. And so if I just click okay, this basically creates a new folder and I'm just gonna close that tab for now. This creates a new folder that we can drag our lights in. So if I take this light and this light and I plug them into that collection, you can see they're now inside this collection. And if I click this little button, it's going to show me the lights that are in those collections. But I can adjust these all together at once. So these values are now linked. I'm adjusting both lights at one time and I can change them both if I wanted to something like pink. And you can see I've got this pink light coming from above and this pink light coming from over here. If I were to create another one and put our other two lights in, we can change these to maybe like a bluish or something. And you can see that we have some different lighting that's showing up for each one. And we can mute these if we want. So if I just get rid of those lights, you see we get those muted. I want to bring them back and see that we're bringing them back and forth. So I don't really want these. So I'm just going to delete both of those collections, but there it's a, that's actually a great way to work procedurally. As long as you're not running into that, that bug that I talked about earlier, that that's a great way to, to work with lights. And I'm just going to actually name these lights. So I'm going to call this one, uh, the, top light. This one's going to be uh, top side. Or actually this one was uh, the front light, wasn't it? Yep. So 
front spot, and then this one was the top spotlight, and this one's more of the fill light. So let's come back to our light mixer now, and let's take a look at all these. So I'm gonna drag all these into here, just so I can see them and adjust their settings. So let's take a look at the the top, uh, or actually let's, let's start with our, our spotlight here. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to solo this light. And again, as I said, I recommend just working with the actual light settings. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna increase our intensity here just a bit. And again, this sometimes wants to be a little bit buggy. So this is actually, oh, this is adjusting our fill light. That's my mistake. So let's come back in here to our base properties. And I'm gonna crank that up a little bit. And again, we're going to change this all a little bit more once we have our, our final settings in here. I'm just gonna dial in something that I think might be close to what we want. So this top spotlight is actually the one that I want. So let's come in here. Maybe just bring that up a little bit. And then I'm going to take this overall light, this top light, and I'm just going to bring that up just a little bit. And then same with this fill, I'm going to bring this one up. Be just a little bit and i think that will give us a good starting point for our our lighting setup so we'll need to create our materials and then we can kind of dial this in and i may actually come in and, and lower these down a little bit or may not just to create a, a little bit more of a moody type effect but we'll see once we have all of our all of our materials actually set up in our scene so that is a little bit of an introduction into the light mixer the node itself works well most of the time, but again, it does have a couple of bugs here and there that you can run into. So just be aware of that when you're working with it. Otherwise, it's a, a really great node to work with all of your lights at once and really build a procedural setup to your lighting. So you can come in and you can create multiple collections and and create different lighting setups with the light mixer node. And then you can just swap between them super quickly and easily. And it's, it's really nice to, to work with as long as you don't have uh, any discrepancies in your viewport versus your, your final render. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. We will take a look at some, probably the materials in the next video. So keep an eye out for that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.